Hi. In the other clips, I have discussed various observational research designs, but the only studies that can actually demonstrate a causal relationship are the experimental studies, also called interventions or trials. Let's look at those in more detail. Experimental studies can take numerous shapes and forms, and what all these shapes and forms have in common is that they involve an actual treatment. In a standard experimental study, subjects are randomly divided across two or more groups. The subjects in the first group receive a particular treatment, whereas subjects in the second group receive the control treatment or a different treatment. Imagine that we're interested in the effect of fish oil on the cholesterol level in the blood. In this example, we would first measure the cholesterol level at the beginning of the study in all subjects. And after that, the subjects in one group would receive capsules that contain fish oil, whereas the other subjects would get capsules that do not contain any active ingredient. They receive the so-called placebo. And after several weeks or so, at the end of the study, we would again measure the cholesterol level in the blood. And in the analysis, we can then determine if the change in blood cholesterol level from the beginning to the end of the study is different between the fish oil group and the placebo group. In this case, what's the advantage of an experimental design over an, an observational research design? We could also collect subjects that, are, that already take fish oil and compare their blood cholesterol levels with a group of subjects that do not take fish oil capsules. Imagine that we find that cholesterol levels are lower in the group that regularly takes fish oil. Certainly an in interesting result, but also a result that's very tricky. And one of the problems with this type of analysis and this type of observational study is that individuals that take fish oil likely have a different socioeconomic and educational background than people that do not take fish oil. They're probably more health conscious and they're thus more inclined to eat a healthy diet, not smoke, and exercise regularly. All of these behaviors, rather than the fish oil capsules, may explain why people that take fish oil have lower cholesterol levels. So the best way to find out if fish oil actually lowers blood cholesterol is by giving it to people and seeing what happens, which brings us back to the experiment we already discussed. If the fish oil treatment caused lowering of blood cholesterol and the placebo treatment did not, and if the statistical analysis indicates that the effect is unlikely due to chance, we can say that fish oil caused a significant decrease in blood cholesterol. In this example, the treatment is very easy, a pill, but the treatment can also involve an entire diet. For example, our division is specialized in conducting fully controlled dietary trials, where the entire diet is provided to up to 100 people for two to three months. And in that type of setting, we know more or less exactly what people consume. In the past, this research design was used to compare the effect of trans fat for saturated fat on blood cholesterol. And in a, in a different study, we did a side-by-side -side comparison of the Mediterranean diet with a Western-type diet and studied the effect on numerous health parameters. A dietary intervention can also be just advice. For instance, one group of individuals is advised to consume more fiber-rich foods, such as whole wheat bread instead of white bread, brown rice instead of white rice, whereas the control group is asked to stick to the low fiber varieties. In that case, it's important that you have an effective system to monitor compliance to the recommendations. Ideally, interventions should be double blind, meaning that neither the participants nor the investigator who is performing the study know what treatment each subject is getting. The code is kept somewhere hidden and can only be broken after the study is finished. Of course, when comparing a Mediterranean, Mediterranean diet with a Western type diet, it should be pretty obvious what everybody is getting. You cannot blind this type of study. However, you can blind studies where you compare different types of fat or high versus low fiber diets. In the most powerful study design, 
all participants get both types of treatment instead of one group getting treatment A and another group treatment B. In such a study, half of the participants first gets treatment A, followed by treatment B with some time in between. And the other half gets it in the reverse order. And this is called a crossover design. Okay, so if the intervention looks at the effect of a food or dietary component on a risk factor, such as blood cholesterol or blood pressure or body weight, they don't need to last very long, usually a maximum of several months. But what if you want to look at the effect of a dietary intervention on actual disease occurrence? For instance, does fish oil lower the risk of heart disease? In that case, one could compare the occurrence of heart attacks between subjects receiving placebo and subjects receiving fish oil. But because the risk of getting a heart attack within any given time frame is small, we need to include lots of subjects. And these subjects also need to be followed for many years to accumulate a sufficient total number of heart attacks. And the subjects also need to be relatively old because people in their 20s or 30s, they don't get heart attacks unless they have a genetic problem. But you know what? Even only including people above the age of 60 won't work because the number of heart attacks still won't be enough. What else can we try? Well, we can only include people in the study that already had a heart attack because their risk of getting another one is quite high. But you see how complicated it gets. And I hope you understand a little bit why intervention studies that actually measure disease as opposed to some sort of risk factor such as cholesterol or blood pressure are very difficult and therefore very rare. When it comes to interventions, almost anything goes except causing harm to people. Any type of dietary intervention needs to be evaluated by an institutional review board, also called the ethical committee. And if the board is concerned about the risks of the intervention, they will not give their approval. Even putting people on a weight gain diet can be problematic because that is perceived as a risk. And in that case, the board may okay the intervention if you make sure that people are guided back to the body weight they had before the study. Taken together, the main advantage of intervention studies over observational studies is that they can establish whether a particular dietary treatment causes a change in certain parameters. None of the observational approaches can do that. Observational studies can reveal associations or correlations, but they do not provide definitive clues as to whether the associations are causal. 